What's up, folks? Well, today is a really special day, and I'm so excited because, I, I mean, you know, just with everything that's happening in the world as far as with isolation and the quarantine and the, the whole pandemic, it just seems like things were slowing down, but, like, opportunities come out of nowhere, and I'm so excited for this one. And I just, I, I got so much to talk about here, but let's just, let's get started, and let me introduce my guest today, Sean Fitzgibbons. How's he doing, buddy? Hey, what's going on? How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for taking time to uh, to chat with me. This is the, truly a blessing. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Thank you. No, no doubt. And if anybody's not familiar with Sean, Sean is not only just an actor, but he's a writer, producer, and doing some directing. So he's doing all the things in the in the film industry. Um, and you may have seen him in some roles, uh, notably in um, Equalizer, and then coming very, very soon, you're going to see him in Defending Jacob, which is just a phenomenal project. I, I I can't even talk about that show without stuttering and just <laughs> my blood. It is so guy. It's so damn good. It's so good. Did so you like good. it? Loved it. I loved it. I, I again, much like in my review, I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, I'm intrigued. And first episode cinematography just swept me on my fleet and off my feet in the score and just like I said, everybody showed up. Like, no matter your role, everybody showed up and, and put on an amazing performance. I was like, at some point, I was like, this review is not going to come off as authentic because it's like, I like everything. So I was like, when I first when I first did the review, I did one, one shot at, you know, just what it, it was. That I was like, I, th I think I'm going to have to record another one because this one just doesn't, right? This doesn't seem like it's authentic. So I watched the last episode again. I was like, no, hell with that. That's exactly what the show was. <laughs> it was just that damn good. It was yeah. that good. And you did a phenomenal job. And, you know, co you commented on my review. I was like, oh, this, this can't be real. <laughs> this can't be real. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> and here, here we are. So before we get started, I have got to ask truly yeah. the biggest question. And the biggest question right now is, which Sean am I getting today? Am I getting the big bad Italian ball Sean or am I getting the quarantine podcast Sean? Because I got to be honest, the big bad ball Sean scares the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're getting the um, you're getting the, the nice mellow quarantine me. Okay, cool. Because yeah. you, you know, anytime and in, in in you show a lot of versatility in your in your crap, but. Anytime you step on the screen, you just command it instantly. And then when you're right. when you're truly the bad guy or the heel, yeah. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's imposing. No matter the length or the, the duration of screen time, it's just imposing instantly. Like when I saw you show when when you showed up um, in the beginning, the first episode, the pilot episode for Defend Jacob, I was like, oh yeah, that's that's my guy. <laughs> the, the, the Equalizer scene is so iconic. Like you'll just never ever like. It, you know, for me, I don't know much about um, the Italian heritage, but I do know that there's, you know, there's the, um, you know, there's the stereotypes of it being really loud, a lot of cursing, imposing, make great food and great conversation. So the oh. equalizer scene was it just it went to, towards every stereotype. So I just would never forget that. And it's been synonymous within so many different people's uh, portraying a, a character. So as soon as I seen you in Defending Jake, I was like, Oh boy, here we go. And it instantly within 10 seconds, I was like, curse word. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first um the first line right off the gate that I have when um the crime scene, initially were uh Chris Evans and Betty Gabriel the crossing over to come onto the actual crime scene. There's a, a uniformed officer who's stopping them, and I don't know where I give my line, you know, you know, let them through. What the fuck's <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's my first line. Yeah. Um Unfortunately, I get a lot of, well, not unfortunately, it's fun. I do get a lot of stuff where there's a lot of cursing. Mm -hmm. And me being from Boston, I think it's uh, it's second nature. You know, they teach yeah. you that grammar school, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, too, wait, this this doesn't feel, speaking of uh, authentic, this doesn't feel right. Who, you know, from watching your podcast here, what is this show going to be sponsored by? Okay. <laughs> 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 It'll be uh, sponsored by Tito's. Absolutely. Tito's, all right, yeah. all right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I did the podcast out of um, sure frustration. I, I did a couple of local ones, and I've been kicking around the idea with a couple of my friends, and it would just be, you know, very light. Some would be funny, or we'd just try to do something like what you're doing. Um, and I'm not technically savvy at all. 
And I just thought, you know, after week two of quarantine, I was just climbing the walls and I just, I just did it just to do it. So <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. Like you can call it off all you want, but first of all, like let, 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 let's, let's be complete honest let's, and completely put it over right now. Right. Like, yes, it's Sean's awful podcast and I love it because yes, it's God awful, but no, seriously, it, it you're, you're my spirit animal because Thank like you. everything that you're saying is truly how I feel. You yeah. just got enough cur courage to say it. Like, yeah. you know, so I like, I, I was, I was resonating with it good. I was like, yeah, this, I need more of this. I, I absolutely do. And it's going to be crazy to see the dynamics of that from, you can see the cure, the, the, the pure frustrations of the quarantine life to yeah. what happens when you're not able to get back out there and, and those other obligations that you had that were canceled and stuff like yeah. that, when you're able to fulfill those and stuff now. So like, it's clearly going to be crazy to see how it just blossoms into a whole other thing, but it's truly resonating with me. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, it's mm -hmm. nice because, um, you know, Zoom, um, my my writing partner who I'm with, we were actually going to do, we were going to shoot a pilot uh, for two mini series ideas that we came up with. We were trying to shoot one, chop it around and hopefully get something for it. And um, with, we always talked about doing a podcast, but now with zoom, you could do stuff like that. And it's, it's accessible to everybody. And I think that the, um, the lo-fi quality of it too, where anyone can do it and everyone's on the same boat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think just for me, you know, I could barely tie my shoes together half the time. <laughs> never mind trying to figure out editing and adding sounds and stuff <laughs> like that. So it was just, you know, it, it was intentionally bad, but it was even worse than I thought. It was. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's kind of a gimmick, you know. So hopefully, um, hopefully tomorrow, or yeah. I was even gonna wait till maybe after uh Friday when, when Defending Jacob comes out just to kind of yeah. talk about that and stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be yeah. awesome. And hell, if you're not good with technology, who cares? You make a mean drink, and that's Thank all you. that matters. I, every, <laughs> trust me, if everybody had three things they wanted, they would want somebody in their crew that could make a drink or somebody that's tech savvy. So you're in yeah. the right boat. Here. That was one of my um that was one of my jobs. I used to I used to bartend too. So oh nice. Oh nice. bartend, as we say <laughs> the bartender. <laughs> but we go a little bit in, in more into defending Jacob. So yeah, yeah Boston, right? What, what's your what's your quick thoughts about Tom Brady jumping ship? I either, I think he should have either quit or he should have stayed. Um, obviously, there's some behind the scenes stuff that's kind of coming to light that we don't know, and I don't think we're ever really gonna know. Yeah, um, it's sad because now the Patriots have become we're now the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, we, we had our heyday. And that's it. It's kind of yeah. sad. Um, but I remember when I was a kid growing up, you know, if uh, there's a local comedian who made a joke, he said that whenever you go to a funeral wake, you're supposed to wear like clothing that's showing that you're depressed. And he would always say, I wore my Patriots jersey. You know, this is before <laughs> this is before Parcells became the coach. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think when Boston was spoiled, because in the last 20 years, we saw three World Series, six Super Bowl champions, Celtics won the NBA, and we saw the Boston Bruins win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. So now it's kind of like, Back to being the underdog, which could be fun. Well, yeah. we'll see what happens. Not filling the New Jersey's that that right there. I, I I'm just not a fan of. No, no. I'm not no. sure why, but yeah, I, I already hear people boycott. Me already. Yeah. yeah, I just think it's just so much has changed. It's like you know, yeah. we lost our guy, and now it's yeah. like, well, you know, try this new design. It'll make you feel better. It's not. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's exactly my right. thoughts about that. I'll wear the New Jersey if I'm painting. I don't mind getting something on it. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then little little old Gronk runs right behind him now too. I, I, that was mind blowing to me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure, and I'm sure that Edelman's just you know begging to get out of his contract. You know, yeah. And it would, yeah. uh, it'd be just like the Celtics when everyone jump shipped, and you know, yeah. they went down to uh, to Brooklyn, right? It was the Nets? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul Pierce yep. and all those guys. Yep. I wonder. I'm wondering, like initially what, what what is hulu thoughts when they you know they put out all the advertisement for brady's commercial and you know by him saying he wasn't going anywhere then instantly as soon as he soon as soon as the whole super bowl is become a distant past and he's like oh yeah by the way i'm leaving so it's yeah. like you know you, you you're getting that pro you're getting that super bowl premiere spot like you're paying top dollar no matter who you are so yeah it's, that's it's a lot of false advertisement in that commercial you know yeah, I, again, he's you know he's a hype guy. I don't know if he's got a new PR guy because he never really did stuff like that before. Yeah. Um, maybe he's bored. Maybe he's looking for a challenge. He did everything he wanted to do with the Patriots. I mean, he, he, 
he's he's got six Super Bowl rings. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You should be ecstatic about that, but we're not. But we're spoiled, you know. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. when you're you're in the sports winning town, I yep. like Washington. I mean, yeah, sure, we won a lot last year, but the culture is just something new that's beginning here. You guys have always been in in in, in, in luxury of of championships and stuff. So <laughs> title but, time. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so also, I know that you're a Star Wars fan, and that yes. has a lot to do with your your beginning to yep. wanting to pursue this career. So quickly, we have to ask for all Star Wars fans out there: just top three or just top one? Could you could you could you tell us your top of uh, films? Well, all I have to say is this is a tough one. Um, at least, I mean, the first one, you know, hands down, it changed everything. It changed uh, uh, special effects. It upped the game. It was like the return of the Saturday matinee type of movie. Fair, um, yeah. Nothing's ever been done like that before. And I, some, a nobody who made all these sort of miniature models. And I think I'd have to compare the first two, you know, New Hope and Empire Strikes Back with The Godfather. The first Godfather movie, groundbreaking, phenomenal. Yeah. But the second one is absolutely fantastic. Um, Empire Strikes Back, it's, it's a darker film. Yeah. And it had that awful cliffhanger. So I would have to say those two... Turn of the Jedi, uh, you know, but I was, I, I can't say how old I was when that came out because I don't want to feel old. But um, <laughs> but I think everyone just wanted, oh, yeah, they want to see, you know, does Han Solo die? Um, I think for me, I, I know a lot of people cap on the Phantom Menace, but I think Phantom Menace because two good reasons. Number one, Darth Maul, mm-hmm. who in my opinion deserved at least another movie. And yeah. uh, the same thing with Qui-Gon, too. I thought we should have seen another movie with Qui-Gon and Ben Kenobi, you know, because there's always the series how he was, you know, brash and reckless. We, we never yep. get a chance to see that. That's true. Yeah. I'm wondering, I, I, and, and, and there's been rumors, I, I'm not even sure if it's been confirmed, but The Mandalorian, I heard, is bringing Darth Maul back. So that will be interesting. They already casted Ahsoka, which if yeah. you watch the Clone Wars series, so that, that, that could be interesting. But you're right. I mean, that's literally what most of the rumors have been about. These these characters that develop that that should have been more developed, getting uh, more time and hopefully Disney took out of that and going to put that in the Mandalorian. But I'm right with you, Empire, New Hope, and I will go Force Awakening. But if if Rogue One counts, it's absolutely my third. I I'm so got good. about Rogue. I you know what? I'm okay. <laughs> I got to change what I said before. Okay, it's uh, Empire Strikes Back, uh, New Hope, and Rogue One. Yeah, I like what Kevin Smith said about Rogue One. He said it's um, it's a war movie, essentially what it is. It's like yeah. the Dirty Dozen, and they were a bunch of characters who I think deserved at least another movie, but it was perfect. It was it it was excellent. I loved everything yeah. about it. And the nice thing is too is at the end when you see um, when Darth Vader boards the ship, that last it's terrifying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. And I heard that they added that uh. After they had filmed the movie, they they thought it needed something. And I oh, that, really? That was the, if I'm if I'm correct. Um, yeah, yeah. That was perfect. It was terrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it was the icing on the cake. And you know, when you're talking about what the Star Wars stories were supposed to be about, as far as like the the stories we didn't know about, and that whole you know series of movies going to were going to be like that. Like Solo, I wasn't a big fan of, but like Rogue One yeah. was the epitome of what I feel like they pitched and what they were able to deliver. And being able to connect that right within a timeline. And you're right, seeing Vader. Again, it's been how many years since we've seen Vader on the screen? So seeing that again, I was like, you know, was the most always, iconic villain of all time. Yeah, and it was. it's always implied that he was a badass, that he was awful. When you catch a like, little glimpse of that, and I, uh, that, you, you, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. there's no yeah. doubt about it now. Yeah. When, when the big ball says, I'm going to do it myself, that's yep. when you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so defending Jacob, which will be streaming on Apple uh, TV Plus, April twenty fourth. You get your, you get the first three episodes, and each and every Friday, a new episode will be released. Fans, I can't tell you enough. You do not want to miss these Fridays because, man, it's so so damn good. It is. And and again, I'll say it to you, and and I'll just say it again. It's literally, it's my it's my favorite show of twenty twenty easily. And what are we four months in? Yeah, I, I I don't even see anything on the horizon that even is going to even strike my intrigue like this did. Just the ho- overall project, you know, from again from the trailers, from seeing some of the casting to the overall product. I I, I feel spoiled to be able to see it all the way through, but 
uh, nonetheless, I'm watching it again once it gets released because I want to kind of intertwine with how social media and stuff is doing with it. But if I if I understand this correctly, you haven't seen it yet. I haven't. Wow. I'm very nervous about it um, because I've had a, <laughs> a bad luck of being uh, a lot of the stuff being cut. Uh, yeah. There's been a couple of movies where they just get rid of me completely. I yeah, certainly think it's me. Yeah. But um, like the equalizer scene, there was actually another minute of dialogue that I had. And I just kind of went on a tirade about, you know, who I hated and all that stuff. Yeah. And there was another 30 seconds of uh, punches to the face and kicks. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know much about the choreography of, of being able to take the, to, to take uh, punches and stuff. But God, was it good? I, yeah. I was going to I was going to say, you know. That was a receipt that you were you were definitely getting ready to get, take. Yeah. It. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, an issue we rehearsed with uh, Martin Chokash, who plays Teddy, the villain, uh, who's a who's a great actor. Uh, he's very very physical, and we had Keith Willard, who's one of the stunt and fight coordinators, and uh, we had worked on something. And then afterwards, uh, Martin Chokash goes, "I came up with a few ideas myself, and perhaps you could run this through." I was like, <laughs> "All right," and it was. <laughs> It was vicious, it was brutal, it was great. We rehearsed that a bunch of times. And yeah. and sometimes when you're doing it, you do get dang. Like for the the ashtray, we had to do one particular shot. We shot that for about a good 45 minutes. You get hit with the head with a with the rubber ashtray. And a couple mm -hmm. of times, you know, I did get, you know, a couple of hits, but that's what we would expect. You know, I'm mm -hmm. no brain, no pain. <laughs> um, there was a movie that I did where it was a fight scene. I play another bad guy. And at the end, the guy is supposed to be on top of me. It's one, two, three. And the third punch, I'm supposed to be out. Yeah. So this is 2 o'clock in the morning on a, on a beach in Gloucester. It's kind of, you know, it's very dark. And uh, at one point when he's going to do the third punch, boom, stars. And I turn, and my nose is leaking like a fart. Oh. Yeah. So I got oh. a, a fracture, and I got two stitches in my eyebrow. Wow. But uh, it was nice because put my nose back into place. So. <laughs> I went from a like six to a ten, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is the epitome of Boston strong, right there. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will say, you know, I be, I would definitely be intrigued to see how much more you you you've had, um, if if anything was cut from it. But absolutely, your presence is well well you know documented and 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 shown within it. The first episode, like I said, um, because obviously you can speak a little bit more about Detective uh, Peterson yourself, but as a I, as a really pivotal person, and I think too, a lot of credit. And I, excuse me, because I'm forgetting his name right now. But the interrogation room scene, Daniel Henschel. Oh and, yeah. Oh my god. Facts. Oh my god. There <laughs> there's a there's a lot of energy in that room, and this is what make you guys you know get paid the money that you do because how in the world do you keep that attitude with that performance across from you? And next to you, and y'all all are in the room, and cameras are around you. Like that room is so, it's, and it, it, it truly sets the tone yeah. for the rest of the episode. There's, it, it was a lot. I, I, it's one of my favorite scenes. And I, you know, a lot of people want to talk about the action, maybe a lot of the drama, but what, what that scene right there, I think it just sets so much of a tone for the rest of the series. Because God, there's so much energy in it. Absolutely, and it also sets out the frustration of the whole thing too. Um, I'm trying to do a spoiler free, but initially what he yeah, yeah. talked about is uh, uh, his name's Daniel Henschel, who actually mentioned to me the other night. He's Australian, and it was very great. He's a giant American basketball fan. I love when someone from another country comes up and goes, oh, mate, you're, you're a basketball fan. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So um, it was him uh, as Leonard Patz who plays the initial suspect who gets arrested, who they think may have committed the murder. And then there's the, the great Betty Gabriel. I love her. I absolutely adore her. She's great. So yes, you've got um, you've got three different dynamics going on, and we didn't really have a lot of uh, time to like to rehearse because initially the first, actually the second day that I shot was the crime scene, and it was uh, end of April, and it was very cold and it was very very rainy. So the interrogation scene was supposed to take place. I think it's like two or three days afterwards, and we shot that scene in the middle of July. So we've all got our uh, winter clothes on in this room, and it, it's just oh, it was, it was brutal. And every once in a while, they stick in a room with it, this big giant tube that would freeze blast you essentially. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, all right, all right, come on, let's, we're gonna get ready to shoot. But um, yeah. 
it just crackled. There were a couple takes. Like I said, I don't, I don't know what's, um, what's going to be in there. Um, but there were a couple of scenes where they just kind of let us roll. And at one point right before, um, uh, Joanna Klein played by the phenomenal Cherry Jones comes in cause we have limited time to interview this guy because he's asked for his lawyer mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. just kind of ran with it. And she would, but out of nowhere, she was like very, very soothing, convincing. You know, you just just tell us what happened. Just tell us what. And at one point, I just, I forgot. I was just, just staring at her. I was like, you know, all right, I'll tell you. You know, <laughs> yeah. but she was phenomenal. He was great. Um, Cherry Jones is fantastic. We hit it off like the first day that we met. I don't know. If, again, I haven't seen it. I don't know what's in it. But my courtroom scene where I'm testifying. Yep, that's it. Good. Um, thank God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were. I was in the um, the makeup trail doing the hair and makeup, and she's next to me, and she's got all sorts of stuff in hair. And she went, "Are you Sean?" I said, "I am." She goes, "I'm Cherry." He's like, "I, I, I know who you are." <laughs> and, uh, she's like, um, "Yeah, uh, let's. Do you want to run lines afterwards and all this stuff?" So we were we were in line a bunch of times. We shot the shit. Um, she was telling me, you know about her weekend and stuff like that. And she kind of came up with this little like backstory, how we had a kind of like a history, a little bit, a bit of respect um, towards that. And uh, that worked And that scene that we shot. Uh, I think it was a full day. The, the scene that I did in the court for the testimony, it was uh, her um, Pablo Schreiber, who plays the Judas. He was fantastic. And um, she's uh, Daryl Edwards, who plays the judge. So there's four of us. So there's a lot of dialogue going back and forth, a lot of cuts stepping over. And um, it was just a lot of fun to shoot. And it's about God. eight pages of dialogue to get through. And wow. the timing's got to be just right. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, it was fantastic. And I, yeah. every once in a while I'd have to pinch myself. It's like, wow, I'm real, I'm really doing this. And yeah. I knew this was going to be uh, I knew this was going to be special. It's something, something different. So I'm, I'm super lucky and very grateful to have been a part of that. Right on, right on. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. What type of conversations, have you had with the people at Apple as far as, you know, being a part of this project or how was, you know, the whole um, auditioning process for, for this role? Well, the auditioning process uh, in, in Massachusetts, it's not like New York or LA. Um, they don't really have agents. You're kind of directly through a casting agency. So you're on file. But recently there's a gentleman who's my agent, Andrew Wilson. Thank you, sir. Uh, initially, you know, they'll submit you for stuff. And there were just a couple of, little roles. And as I say, there's no such thing as small parts, just small actors. <laughs> and there was one thing, it was just one or two lines. And I got a call back for that. And the casting agent, Angela Perry from Boston Casting, she said, nah, you should read for one of the co-ops. And I said, okay. And that's what it was. I, I read for that. I got called back twice. And during the, the final callback, we were in a room with Mort Tilden, the director, and Mark Bomback, the writer, producer of the show. Um, and I had a panic attack before I did my audition. <laughs> I, I was sweating. And um, essentially, I did you know my dialogue from the crime scene. And then I did all the dialogue for the courtroom scene. So there was like about like 15 pages of dialogue that I had mm. in the spot. And um, initially, I thought, you know, well, it'll probably be about a week or two before you find out anything. And it was like four or five weeks afterwards, too. Wow. So, so wow. Finally, when I got the call from my age, and I was super excited. <laughs> As you said, it's, it's amazing. It was cool. And I know that uh, Apple, um, I, I, I could be wrong, but this is the most money they've ever spent on a television show. Mm. So I, I know that they're trying to establish their stream service, um, yep. competing with you know, Netflix, uh, Hulu, Amazon, and, and Disney+. Plus. But uh, they've got some great accolades from um, The Morning Show. I Love haven't watched it. that yet. Is it good? Man, like uh, like I said in my review, last year my favorite show was The Morning Show. Came from Apple Black. It just it just yeah. made sense that it had to that my next favorite show was gonna come from it. Qual- quality over quantity. That's oh, sure. my argument with all day. So absolutely. I just uh I just hope uh you know enough people get to see it. You yeah, know, I, I yeah. just got a feeling it's gonna be uh I'm very happy that you said it's your favorite show of this year, you know, because you know, people have time now to to watch yeah. Oh, shows. yeah. No excuse yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and 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 uh, again, I've been feel, feel like I've been getting a lot of good feedback of people like, oh, I got to check it out. Um, and you know, everyone has an Apple device, so it's going to be right at everyone's fingertips to watch yeah. it and stuff like that. So I have no doubt that you know a lot of people. If, if the first wave of people don't get it, the buzz of next week. Matter of fact, because once people binge those first, and I love the way how they're deploying this, 
Yeah. Once people get those first three episodes and they, you know, they they're jacked up now because they're gonna want more. Just like anything else, it's going to get the chatter in on social media, and then that's when it's going to take off. So it's going to be that first initial wave that knows, and the other one's going to be like, I got to find out about this because it's it's really that good. It's yeah, really were that you good. hooked the first three episodes when you watched it initially? I was, I was hooked. So, again, and I, as, as, as somebody that reviews movies, I was hooked within the first 15 minutes of the right. first episode just because of the craft. But as a fan, taking all that away, the story instantly, I was hooked by the first episode. I just, I really love the dynamics of, so, you know, with Chris Evers being, um, um, uh, being what, prosecuted after the fact, yeah. and then, you know, bearded, bearded cap, as I like yeah. to call him. <laughs> so seeing him bearded and then not, and freshly cut, and, you know, kind of motivated and, you know, the two different dynamics there, and I'm like, whoa, this this is different. I, I, you know, I, I like I said, I've seen movies that do different vantage points, but not so much in the in a style that you're invested in both, and it's pulling you both ways. Because at the same time, like, you know, the, the show, Defending Jacob, is uh, am I supposed to, you know, be with this guy or against this guy? Right. And then do I do I do I believe his son? Do I, it's it's so much that's happening, and it's yeah. you know. Just performances across the board. It, it first episode easily. I was like, yeah. And then beginning of the second episode, you're just like, all right, well, you're here now, so that's right. it. K kiss the next eight hours goodbye. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the first two episodes definitely set it up. Yeah. Um, the first episode, you know, sets up the story, what's going to happen, who most of the players are. But then episode two kind of you know revs everything up. You know, like I said, I've, I've read all the scripts. Yeah. I ju uh, I just haven't seen it yet, so I'm yeah. I'm very nervous. We have I, to talk again after you see absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But because I'm my own worst critic, there's a couple of things, even like anytime if I watch the equalizer, if it comes on TV or someone mm -hmm. mentions it, I'll go back and there's like 50 things right off the bat. I I shouldn't have done that or I should have yeah. did this differently. And so it's just yeah. it's just gonna drive me nuts. But um yeah, I mean it only makes you better when you're your own worst critic. You know, if you're dissatisfied, then you don't get opportunities like defending Jacob, you know? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be great if this um if this leads to more steady work cuz right now in in Massachusetts once uh the zombie apocalypse ends, um I know that there's going to be at least five or six different movies that are going to be filming here. Awesome. And I've awesome. already done um sent out a couple of auditions on tape. Awesome. And, uh, I should have just sent them a, a clip from the Awful podcast. I, I won't ever work again. <laughs> you, you'll be racking up interviews in no time with that right. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Police, yeah. You, it, it's kind of crazy too how interviews are done like this, and you just lock, you just watch any major production, and this is like, wow, this is studio production right at your home because everyone's doing it like yeah. this now. But that's nice too because um, look at a show like Smilf that came out or um, Fleabag. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's something bad. that I'm trying to do. Someone came up with original content. They shot like a, a sizzle reel or a, like their own pilot, and they shopped it around, and it was different. It was unique. Yeah. And I like the fact that because it's someone that you haven't seen before, that you don't know what to expect. You don't have preconceived notions. That's what I think about this uh, this television show, Defending Jacob. I mean, there's a lot of iconic people in it, but there's also a bunch of new actors who you haven't seen or maybe people aren't familiar with. So it's it's a great ensemble. It really yeah. is. It truly yeah. is a great ensemble in this one. And I definitely want to throw this out there too. As much as we put emphasis on the first couple of episodes, and then once you get to the later tier of the episodes, new characters are introduced. Yep. And they're just as dynamic. You know, yep. I, I I don't want to speak about anybody in particular because it's not really a spoiler, but it, it, it really does heighten like everything when certain characters are introduced and it just changes really the dynamic of the plot in this in itself. So right. Um, like it, William, it's a, William Safaris, who plays O'Leary. Yeah. The big, big, big guy. Yeah. I know him. He's a he's a great guy. He's a yeah. he's a teddy bear. He's he's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. He's a great guy and he's a very, very good actor. So I'm yeah, I'm happy that a lot of local people got some good stuff on this. That that is awesome. So I so I do take it that it was shot in Boston, Dan. It was shot um Newton is uh for those who aren't familiar with the area, it's a suburb right outside of Boston. Okay. Um that's where the it takes place mostly where they live in, but okay. they did go to Boston to shoot a bunch of stuff. Um, at one point, um, uh, again, trying to be spoiler free, when Detective uh, Peterson makes the initial arrest of the first suspect, it's a hardware store, 
and it was in Hudson, Mass., okay. which is about maybe 40 minutes outside the city. And Chris Evans grew up in the next town next to it. Mm. So it's kind of like, you know, he's he's playing home court advantage. And then yeah, yeah. the courtroom scene was actually shot in a studio in Devons, Massachusetts, which is way out west. And it used to be an old army base, but they've turned it into a movie studio. So while right. we were shooting that there, uh, some of the interior stuff, they're also shooting season two of Castle Rock. Oh, yeah. oh nice. So, I love that show. So nice. you're seeing, you know, people all dressed up in suits, and then you're seeing someone come down with like, you know, with fake blood all over him. So yeah. Yeah, it was actually pretty cool. That is awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Uh, it, it, again, I want to uh, focus back on your character really quick. What can you tell us overall? No one had no clue who Detective Peterson is. Could you just explain to us who that character is in this in this project? Sure. Uh, Detective Peterson is the head homicide detective for the Newton Police Department. He is the first on scene. So initially, uh, you know, they're cameras in the crime scene. And when Chris Evans as Andy Barber and Betty Gabriel as Paula Duffy, he is the uh, district attorney uh, and she is the head investigator for the state police because technically it falls on federal property. So it becomes a state police matter. So it's a the joint task force, as they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm briefing them on the what, where, and when. Here's what happened. This is what we think that happens. A witness found him. So, and to me, that was that was one of the things I love because whenever you see like a cop show or a movie, the crime scene, it's just it's like, hey, it's that guy who who explains everything. So there was <laughs> a lot of uh, there was a lot of pressure. I was very, 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 very nervous uh, that day, and I had just met them like for the first time. Um, um, we did like a table read. We read the first two episodes, but I didn't get a chance, you know, to talk to him. It's, it's, it's me. No one wants to talk to me. I don't want to talk to me half the time, but, um, but all that, it was just very, very intense. And you, you know, again, you have to be on your game. Uh, Morton Tilden shoots a movie just like Clint Eastwood. He knows what he wants. He sees it and he'll hire you because he, you know, he believes that you're going to come prepared. You're on your A game. So there's a lot of there was a lot of uh, blocking to do, setting things up, a lot of camera movements. But at that point, it starts to get very cold. We were losing light real fast. Yeah, and it was starting to rain a little bit. So it was be good now, be good now. And um, mm -hmm. but I think that worked. Uh, I I think it worked for the scene. It's a very grim set, very grim day. But that sets up the whole scene. So initially, Detective Peterson is assisting Duffy and Andy Barber, you know, on the murder case. And initially they think it's one particular suspect, Leonard Patz, played by Daniel Henschel. And uh, again, trying to be spoiler free, you know, this person may or may not have done it. Uh, and I think at this point, everyone else is very convinced that it is the guy. I think because they want it to be the guy. They want to get it done super fast. Yep. And Peterson and Duffy are like, I don't know about this, guys. So that kind of sets off the initial internal conflict in the investigation. So that's one aspect that kind of throws the monkey wrench into everything. So it kind of sets it all up a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's cool. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I and I have to ask obviously because the one question I have not asked today is that as you refer to him in this series as the boss, how is it working with <laughs> Mr. Captain America himself, Chris Evans? It's very surreal. There's there's only three people that I've ever met that I've ever gotten starstruck in. When they shoot movies in, in, in Boston or Massachusetts, my dad's a set medic. So whenever they shot a commercial movie. So years ago, there was a movie called Meet Joe Black. It had Brad Pitt and Anthony Hopkins. And I sometimes I'd go on set to visit. Well, I don't know where I get a tap on the shoulder and it's Anthony Hopkins. Uh -huh. So I'm like, oh, I couldn't talk. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got to meet and have a conversation with Denzel Washington for Whew. 20 minutes. Yeah, I stuttered. I couldn't spit a word out. <laughs> And eventually, he gave me a hard time. He's got a Yankees hat. I was like, "Don't mind this." And we <laughs> talked about uh, <laughs> we talked about baseball and all that stuff. Yeah. It was very, very cool. Um, and then, yeah, it was very surreal seeing him in person. You know, um, and I immediately felt like the ugliest person in the room when you see Chris Evans in the show. <laughs> um, but he was super super cool i didn't get a chance to talk to him that much i got to talk between takes we did the, the first scene mm -hmm. and uh he was asking me you know where i was from about and i said no, I'm, I'm from south boston which we have a reputation for being a little crazy and i assured him that that wasn't the case um <laughs> and then we were talked about um uh eddie murphy like an old eddie murphy bit because at that mm. point the nazi was going on tour 
And um, he was super cool, but he's very busy because number one, he's the star. He's Chris Evans. He's one of the producers. He's in just about every scene. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but Endgame had, was just about to come out. So especially if you went to some of the neighborhoods where they shot, there'd be hundreds of kids. Never mind uh, all, the, all the women that were all over the place. <laughs> tons of kids, and they had like Captain America t-shirts. Some of them had the shields. And um, he took pictures with as many of them as he could, uh, talked to them. He's just a super cool guy. And when we had the rap party, we had it at this like, this bowling alley in the middle of nowhere. And it's not fancy. And they had food trucks outside. And he was just making the rounds, talking to everyone, making sure everyone is having a great time. He's a very super, local boy done good, you know? Yeah. Inspirational. Awesome. You know, if he ever does a, another Captain America movie, maybe I could be the, I don't know, the guy that says, you know, here's your soda, sir, or something like that. <laughs> I'd be happy with that, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. That's so great. before we get out of here any quick, uh, could you just speak to about, and I know there's a lot of, speaking of monkey ranch, there's a lot of things being put on hold right now because of the pandemic and so forth. But is there anything you can speak about towards the future that we could be expecting the projects and stuff you're working on and obviously direct people to your um, social media so we can catch that next episode sure. of your podcast. Yeah. Thank you. Um, like I said, initially my writing partner, David Curtis, he's a local actor and a director. Uh, we came up with two miniseries. One is about these two British gangsters who've come to the United States and are living under assumed identities, living the legit life. One guy is absolutely all about it. The other guy is not. And he sabotaged them. And he tried to bring them into the life of crime. Yep. Uh, the second one was a detective series, which is about two cops who get, you know, they're forced to resign because they're set up. But in the meantime, they open up this half-assed, you know, local private detective agency. <laughs> so it, so some of it's very, very funny. And yeah. the B story is I'm trying to figure who framed them. But also deals with the old Boston meets the new Boston one of this. You know, and, it, and it, it'll be light. It'll be funny. So that's what we're trying to get off, off the ground here, too. And uh, initially, yeah, there, there's a couple other things that um, another friend of mine was trying to do something, uh, a couple of shorts. But everything is kind of put on hold. Yeah, yeah. So once we're uh, we're not grounded anymore, and we can all leave our room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, because we're so bad. Um, you know, hopefully, once that gets going, it everyone will be busy. You know, um, yeah. And I hope that someday we can have, if I, you know, fingers crossed, I do get something, we can meet face to face. That'd be that great. would be awesome, man. That would. And be I'll awesome. make you. I'll make a bunch of drinks. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. I was about to get right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'll bring the whiskey, you do the mixing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Sean. I, I again, you. this is so surreal. An amazing job Thank you. on previous projects and just defending Jacob. Oh my God. It's it's just phenomenal. I can't we have to we'll we'll be talking very soon because I yeah. initially need to hear your reaction upon seeing it. I know you're gonna be hard on yourself, but please enjoy it because it's so good. It's are so you gonna good. do uh, like a, a review like per episode? I've been, I've been thinking about that. And the hard part about it is that it takes so much. Yeah. It, it takes so much self-control to say, all right, let me stop this episode and review. Right. And you're just like, and I could just hit play and watch this next one. Right <laughs> <now."> <laughs> yeah, I'm usually distracted so, too. Yeah. So I may I may do one for the first three since that's how it's going to be released, and then yeah. do one each episode since you know that's kind of the rhythm everyone's going to go through. But yeah, it's yeah. uh it's it, again it's I and I and I and it's it's the right way to deploy it by Apple, but man, the fans are going to be like they're going to be jittering for a week, like. I, I so. need. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really hope so. Yeah, it's so, going to be great. Um, it's going to be great. I, like I said, I haven't seen it, but if it's if it's as good as I if I thought it was when we were shooting it, we're onto something. We're onto something it very very special. Comes to, it's, this comes together beautifully. Is is it, again? It's, it is my favorite project of 2020 thus far, and I believe that's going to be the same argument to, for the end of the year. So, yeah, yeah. kudos to you and your and and, and the team and, and getting that all together. It was it was amazing. It's Thank well you. deserved. And again, we'll be talking more soon. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you soon and gotcha. everything. Let's just get through. Yeah, like I said, let's get off punishment for now, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then beg, and then we can get out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I can actually sit in a restaurant. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of pasta. <laughs> you said that. I was like, did he really just say that? It, yeah. It's a hard time right now. <laughs> but two hours from now, I'm going to have some more pasta. So <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting with me, and we'll be catching you real soon, buddy.
Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, man. Not a problem. All righty.